Across the Atlantic to Port of Spain, brilliantly touched by the sun and colour of the West Indies, came a reminder of Westminster. Her Majesty had come to open the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago. There to receive her were the President of the Senate, and after him the Speaker of the House of Representatives. For here at Port of Spain is a legislature on the Westminster model. Awaiting the monarch were the representatives of the upper and lower houses, whom the Queen now bade resume their seats. The royal speech from the throne outlined, just as it does on such occasions in the mother of parliaments, the legislation contemplated in the new session. The Duke was uniformed as Colonel-in-Chief of the Trinidad and Tobago Regiment. After the ceremony, thousands outside had the chance to see and cheer the Queen and her consort. The island's dignitaries and their wives were invited to meet the royal visitors at Governor General's house, an engagement at which the privileged appeared in some very high-class chapel. visit came within a fortnight of the carnival and as that is an event not to be missed the island staged a preview certainly as far as genuine carnival spirit goes the people of Trinidad have nothing to learn from the Mediterranean countries was thoroughly amused by a character portraying Henry VIII. Bluff King Hal was probably in search of something really colourful in the way of a new wife. that the Queen remarked, if this is only a preview, the carnival itself must be fabulous. The Queen and Duke left Trinidad by way of San Fernando. Driving through the town in an open car, they were cheered to the echo by more than 100,000 onlookers. Such demonstrations, often spontaneous, prove with what affection the monarch is held by people thousands of miles from Britain. As lightning in a twilight hour, they show in vivid focus the intangible but very strong relationship between Crown and Commonwealth.